the Orville return of a new episode, and this time there could be some huge consequences if the story continues to play out the way it is with the characters in the series as a whole, because they dealt with time travel in this episode, and the people that make the trailers continue to do a great job because I did not hint at any of the aspects of this episode from the trailer. The entire thing was hidden. For the spoiler alert, it is a version of Kelly from when she was a lieutenant seven years ago, gets pulled to the future, and the timelines continue to coexist, and they send her back, and it makes it look like it's working, and then it didn't work, and she changes the past because she decides that she's not going to even try to date Ed, and how he is going to uh, now never have that relationship. And as she said earlier in the series season, this particular season, that without Ed being in the relationship, she wouldn't do the eye trick as long as other things. Because without Ed, the version of Kelly that we know wouldn't exist, and the version of Ed that we know wouldn't exist, and the Orville itself wouldn't exist because she wouldn't have stuck her neck out to try to save Ed's career. And this could even go into further alterations of the entirety of the series, because what if Isaac was assigned to another ship, because since the Orville wasn't there and he didn't have the playful crew, he had a more strict crew, maybe he would have seen humans as a horrible beings, and the human race would have been destroyed by the Kalon. The, uh, if they didn't have such a carrying crew and had more of a military crew... No one would have ever fought Bordis's thing, Bordis's uh, daughter's sex change, and they would have instantly demanded that the child be done, and the women would have all been killed because they they don't want to risk the weapons being taken away from them. And unless she was sent back to a parallel universe where it, ha- it won't have any effect on it, and like, or, or maybe it's like the birth of their mirror universe, where everything is changed now, and the current sh- and our current cast and crew won't be altered, but in the future it will be, like a Captain Grayson comes into play, and uh, Ed dropped out of point, and they're barely holding on because of the uh, Kalon invasion whole thing could be played out that way or an alternate way there's only one episode left of this particular season and as they do get a renewal that so far all of plans are saying how they may be get and maybe end up getting one because the there is no uh, they're not saying series finale they usually say that when the series is canceled before this the show wraps for the season so there's still hope for a season three which I'm hoping for because as, as you've probably notice from these this is the only series on TV that I actually watch that's continuing because Game of Thrones is over after this season or series that I feel is worth even talking about because the procedural cop shows you don't really need to watch those very much or talk about them after they've aired they're kind of just there unless something drastic happens like a main character is killed or something I extremely enjoyed this storyline. I always loved the whole time travel aspects and alternate realities and what-if scenarios and all that. Much better than the last episode. This episode also is like the first, also like the last one with only being one storyline, not being multiple ones. And if the TV time is working, I'll do a recap if it's not. Oh, well, comment down below and let me So the episode starts out with Gordon, Kelly, Tala, and Ed talking about the good old days where when the two were still a early couple dating. Where Kelly would get Ed to drink even when he did not want to. She would order more drinks, and he would say no, he would not want one, but she would order it anyways, and he would drink it. The two leave, leaving the former couple alone. 
Ed asks her, is there any, is she still gung-ho on wanting to be just friends and not wanting to have a future? She says yes, because she does not see a first officer captain relationship working if they were dating. Meanwhile, John and Isaac are testing a new time travel machine, which is a theory by somebody in a reunion. Kelly walks in to see how they're doing, and they say that their experiment is going well, and they're going to test it. Later, uh, John's walking down the corridor, and the ship starts shaking. The lights go off, and everything's shaking, and more shaking. Whole ship shakes, and Ed asks what happened. It was a some kind of anomaly in space. And when Isaac turns around, every, the ship's fine, it was every, in its past. When Isaac turns around, Kelly's clothes are changed, her hair child's changed, and everything has changed. And she doesn't know who he is. But Kelly is on the bridge. Isaac calls, and she's on the bridge. So he calls security to, the, uh, to his lab. This new Kelly is taken to the doctor's office where it is discovered that she is the exact same Kelly down at the molecular level, not a clone or a decoy or anything. And the current Kelly, or the old one as they call her, comes walking in with Ed to see the new one. And they try to figure out what happened. She said that she was, how this could have happened, she was thinking about Ed's first, Ed and her's first date when this happened, and the anomaly grabbed onto her mind and pulled this version of her from the past. She is seven years younger. This was them explaining it, how it could have happened, and they ask if, can they return her, and if she's here, how come the current Kelly is still here as well and they say time travel doesn't make that much sense uh, theoretical physics and all that mumbo jumbo science sci-fi mum, sci-fi nonsense and how you know it could be a parallel universe could be a parallel timeline now and can they return her maybe they will work on it Ed and the real Kelly start talking about uh all this could happen to the younger one, and they decided to be truthful to her about how they used to date, but they broke up because there was adultery. They didn't want to tell her which one it was. Told her all about her, what happened in the future, and Kelly gave her access to her diaries. She is escorted to her room by Tala, and on the bridge... Gordon starts. Talk, Gordon talks to them about how everything is going, and John comes in and says how the anomaly has passed, and they can't recreate it because the computers didn't catch it. So they'll have to do something else to fix this. Because, as Isaac says, not even the Kalon know very much about time travel. Kelly asks Ed and the other Kelly about. You know, what's she going to do with her life now if she's going to be stuck here? She can't go home because her friends aren't really her friends. They're the other Kelly's friends. And not even her mother would understand this type of thing. Even though the mother probably would. You know, it's like having their daughter again. Just two of them. And Ed says how she could have her pick of any place in the Union uh, on a vessel. Because she, she is a lieutenant with all that training. And they would be able to have a well, another Kelly Grayson in the Union. And he would have, and he would get the admirals to help place her anywhere. She says hello in her office, and Tala comes in and talks to her, tries to be friendly to her about how you know I'm new on this ship too, and let's get you a uniform because you are an officer. She next time you see her, she is in a medical uniform. So apparently Kelly was in a medical student before she became a officer with the uh, command center section of the ship. And she's telling a hilarious story that's also embarrassing about how she got a bunch of cadets to strip naked as well as her, and she slid in Greece up to a one of the ships were in training in that. And the commander 
K- Kelly comes walking up to Lieutenant Kelly, asks me to speak privately, and says, you know, you really, I really don't want you to tell these type of embarrassing stories because these people need to see me as a authority figure because I am in command. The other Kelly agrees. And next time you see, and she asks them about, is she, uh, does she have any kind of feelings for Ed or anything? She says, no, that's past, we're just friends now. And the next time, and then it cuts to Ed and Gordon playing a video game. And Lieutenant Kelly comes walking in and asks to speak to Ed alone. And then she asks him if he would like to go on their second date. Because she really liked the first one they just went on when, to him, it was seven years ago. To her, it was yesterday. Ed goes to Commander Kelly and asks, Hey, uh, this is the situation. I didn't want to, I really want to tell her yes, but I don't want to hurt your feelings because I really do care for you and she says you know you're you change just as much as I have how do you know you're gonna be able to keep up with her and the two go on a date where it replays the little story that Gordon was telling about how yeah she he does Ed doesn't want to drink but she orders more and ends up drinking four drinks and Ed gets a little drunk he walks her back to her her room where they kiss and Ed goes, Ed goes walking off smiling. The next day, Commander Kelly comes visiting Lieutenant Kelly and tells her, and they talk about the date and how, you know, Ed's a different person. It's not your Ed. And she says, How you're a disappointment to me. My whole goal was to be a captain by your age. You're not a captain, you're a commander. I wanted to be married and have children. You're not married, you don't have children, you're actually divorced. And I wanted to make the universe a better place. Although Commander Kelly has done that because she did uh, help those people. She has helped multiple planets. And she even became a god of that one planet. And she goes to the ship where she's angry with Ed, but he doesn't know why. And a, two Kalon vessels are spotted off the bow coming at the, after them. They run and hide, and the Kalons are leaving them alone. Ed and Gordon are talking in the bar about how, or the mess hall, about how his feelings, and Gordon says, Yo, man, you, I, we went through this before when she broke up with you. It destroyed you, and I had to be there to pick you up. Oh, it, ain't, it won't happen this time. And he, and then Lieutenant Kelly comes walking up and invites Ed and Gordon to a her favorite spot on Earth. And she says she also invited Tala and Bordas. And they're all going. It is a nightclub bar. Her and Tala are dancing and having fun while Ed is on, Ed and Gordon are sitting down, complaining about the loud noise and how they're tired. There they spot, they spot, not Isaac, Norm dancing, and then they also show Bordas and Clyden dancing, and they're yelling about how the rave music is like their mating music, apparently, and it's the synth of humor there. Then you go to Commander Kelly talking to the doctor about how you know, the Lieutenant Kelly said how she's at the appointment, and hey, the young always tell the old they don't know what they're talking about, even though we have wisdom. Did you call me old? And the next time you see, uh, cuts to Ed in his room drinking alone, and Lieutenant Kelly coming to him in a nightgown, and that's apparently the one that she wore on their f- first anniversary. I don't know why I have so many of those. They get down to the... They lie down in bed and kiss, but he stops her because even though he really wants to do this, he loves Commander Kelly, and she is not Commander Kelly. She's Lieutenant Kelly. And before they can talk, he has to run to the bridge because the Kalon are back. And... There are two of them now, and they can't get, they can't lose them. They're going to come up on them, and there's nothing, and they try not figure out things to do. And that's when Lieutenant Kelly comes up with a plan that there's an ice planet nearby, and if the Orville hides within the ice field around the planet, it may get them away. And that's apparently something she studied in school that Commander Kelly has forgotten about, and Isaac agrees. 
and they go and try it. Suspension, you get to see it work, you can see the Kalons fly by, and obviously it works. Commander and Lieutenant Kelly is apologized to one another, and they decide that since it is an apology, since they're both apologizing, that they're just going to forget about it and continue to go. That is when John and Isaac come walking in and say they have figured out how to send her home. Some scientists, sci fi mumbo jumbo. I know they mentioned the uh, thing that's always in Doctor Who, that joke about how uh, switch to polarity is in there. But how are they going to handle her knowing knowledge of the future now? And the doctor suggests that they can wipe her memory, but it could cause permanent brain damage. And Young and Lieutenant Kelly points out how, oh, it's going to work, because that's why Commander Kelly can't remember any of this. Because it works, and, you know, she's here, so obviously everything works out okay. And they do it. uh, Lieutenant Kelly asks uh, Tala if she wants to get a drink seven years from now, in other words, that night. And Tala looks at Commander Kelly and she agrees to it so that he can still stay friends. The two Kellys say goodbye, and Ed says goodbye to Lieutenant Kelly, and they go up to the, gr- they go up to the bridge. They do the uh, whole thing. Her memory is wiped, or so they think. It takes a lot of power to redo what happened in space, so they give the ship all it's got. And she wakes up back home in her time period to the point where Ed called her and wanted to ask her out on a second date. But Lieutenant Kelly turns him down and it fades to black. This is where I think it could be the birth of the mirror universe for this series because the next the season finale trailer doesn't give any hint of you know things changing drastically within the current timeline of the thing. So obviously this is a parallel universe or parallel timeline and as they stated in the episode where Gordon was going to date the woman from the 21st century and the hologram machine how if you change one event everything else changes like you pull a Jenga thing a whole thing falls down how you know if no Kelly there is no Orville without Kelly and Ed dating now this Kelly has changed that so that they don't date so Ed never goes into the depression, gets drunk, where he needs Gordon to pick him up. So Gordon drops out of Union Point because he's depressed over his friend who he thinks is dead, being who was actually kidnapped and taken to prison. So he drops out and goes does whatever he does, so no Gordon. John stays the shell that he was because he doesn't want to think people think he's a nerd because of how smart he is. That was pointed out in the episode of season one. And Kelly's the one who brought him out, but since Kelly is obviously not the commander of the Orville, she's on a different ship now. Because the Orville was all brought together by the like the people who no one else wanted really. And it's the uh, crew of rejects, because that's why they don't act like a mil- militarized people. Isaac is sent to a actual militarized ship, obviously, where he finds out that humans that he thinks all humans act that way. And the Kalon invade Earth like they were going to, and, you know, they lose because Isaac didn't have any friends or things, people that cared about him, because, you know, they're all acting the mili- proper military way. And that would lead to the Kalons winning. On the Mogulin side of things, see uh, if Bordas was on a more militarized ship and not one where people care about one another, he would obviously have told, done everything by the books where he wouldn't have cared about his daughter being changed to a boy. He would have instantly told the captain about the baby on the sh- on the, in the last episode and. The Moglin, since they're being militarized, would have they would have t- contacted them, telling exactly where the all female planet is, and they would all have been taken back home, or to the home planet, and they would have been altered and put in prison slash killed. So a long chain of events, this whole domino effect, 
where she has decided that she is going to not date Ed because that would uh, cause her heartache. And she's going to go and do her own thing and change history because she has not forgotten anything. She knows everything about the future now, or her future, and she is going to change it for the better. As it, that's what it looks like. So, if that whole thing's changed, you know, if the Krill basically could, could be potentially winning the war and everything, this could cause the ripple effect, which would make me think of a mirror universe where we see this again, where she figures out how to rip open the parallel universe hole and get back to our universe, or the main universe, and she like blames them for telling in the future or something like that. Something that may never happen because it could just be something they decide that they want to forget because, oh, it's an interesting sci-fi story. And, oh, the shocker, she said no. But then again, I could be right. And this could be something for a future storyline where you see this version of Kelly again and everything has changed because, as they stated in the previous season and this one, you change one thing about the past and everything else changes. Lieutenant Kelly has changed her future. She no longer dates Ed. So what do you think of the episode? Comment down below and have a good one.